All right, so welcome back to another episode of Cold and Posy Fishing. So today we're going to be talking about some specific baits and some techniques that you can do to help entice the fish this time of year to attract uh, more fish to your bait, basically. Um, so we got some transitions and stuff like that. We're going to be talking about jigs. We're going to be talking about uh, crank baits, and we're going to be talking about uh, some jerk baits and stuff. But the key feature is is presenting these baits in a way that the fish find it attractive. So stay tuned to something you don't want to miss. All right, everybody. So let's just jump into it. So <clears throat> let's talk about the first thing I want to talk about is crankbaits. Okay. So the reason I kind of wanted to do this video was, um, a lot of the people, that I know are not very comfortable this time of year using moving baits uh, to catch fish. Uh, most of them are slowing down throwing Ned rigs and stuff like that. So um, me personally, I'm a power fisherman. Um, most of my life I fished slow and now I power fish uh, just because I have more success power fish. When I say more success, it depends on how you look at it. I always catch more fish uh, using slow presentations most of the time uh, this time of year, but the bigger fish that I catch typically come off my moving baits. So not as frequent bites uh, necessarily for me personally, not as frequent bites, but the fish that I do catch are typically larger. <laughs> so um, in a tournament setting, that's what you want. But either way, uh, that's the way I prefer to fish. So if, if that interests you, then definitely uh, keep watching. But uh, if you're new here also, make sure to like, subscribe, and follow more content share it i mean it helps me out a whole lot that's one way you can help support the channel that's it helps me out a whole lot so either way uh let's go ahead and jump into it let's talk about the moving baits and we've got one uh technique that is slow so uh you know if you're into the slow moving techniques then this will definitely uh this video will help benefit you too i'll try to put chapters down there where you can jump to it but okay either way uh crank baits so first let's talk about a rattle trap Okay, so this right here, this is uh, the Berkeley War Pig. Um, I'm a big fan of the War Pig. There ain't a whole lot of rattle traps I buy anymore, but the War Pig is definitely one that I do buy. Um, the way that this bait's designed, it does not get hung up as much. The way you run this thing, um, w when you're reeling this bait, it, it's kind of got a real deep nose dive, and it kind of rolls over, and the hooks does not get caught on stuff near as much. But either way, it's got a nice, nice rattle in it. It's a rattle trap, obviously, but it's got a real, real tight action. And this time of year, especially with this bait, I like it because I can reel it fast. I can reel it slow. It doesn't really matter. This one right here is a uh, quarter ounce, okay? So you can quarter, three, eight, half ounce, whatever you prefer to throw. Me, most of the time when I'm fishing spotted bass lakes, um, or if I'm just fishing regular lakes, and I'm on a crawfish pattern, I throw the quarter ounce, okay? Because this bait right here is not gonna be much bigger or much smaller than a regular crawfish. So I'm trying to mimic that size, that pattern and everything. All right, so typically that bait right there, I'm throwing, well, any of these baits, I'm using it on rip wrap. I'm using it um, around lay downs, um, anywhere that I think fish could be, you know, just hunkered up if you didn't watch my last video check that last video out because i kind of go over locations and stuff uh on where to find the fish this time of year so th these baits are gonna tie into all that so another one is the berkeley money badger uh and i, I will say i'm not sponsored by berkeley at all I'm not sponsored by berkeley at all these are just the baits uh, that I prefer to use. Some of them's Berkeley, some of them's not, but the first two is Berkeley. I'm just letting you know. I'm not sponsored by Berkeley. This is the stuff I use. Berkeley Money Badger. This is a real good one on those rip route and uh, channel bends. Okay, sorry about my rooster there. He gets excited. He likes fishing. <laughs> but either way, um, the Berkeley Money Badger, really good on those rip route places, uh, the bridge, the lay down, stuff like that. It's a real, real good, the wide channel bends, anything like that. You can get that bait down, stays hunkered down in those rocks and does not get hung, or hung up as much. Um, but I typically go with the bright red or the light orange, just depending on the time of the year. Um, and then, uh, another one that ties into all this and I've caught more fish off of it and I finally had to buy one and I'm really upset that I had to buy one. But Spro Rock Crawler, uh, this is the 55 Rock Crawler. 
If you've never tried a rock crawler and you love crankbait fishing, you need to get one of these. The one that I had before this looked like it had been pulled behind a truck. That's how many fish I'd caught off of it. The bill was all scratched up from banging it off rocks and trees and everything else. This bait right here is just a wonderful bait. Now this one, um, this is the color that I typically like to throw. I think it's called the uh, Phantom Brown. Uh, yeah, yeah, Phantom Brown. Um, that's typically the one I like to run. Now, if you get in those muddy water situations, you can get you like the bright red or something like that. I forget the name of the colors. But anyways, I will link all these baits down in the description. So if you want to go to Tackle Warehouse and look at them, whatever, uh, they'll they'll be down in, in the description. So now let's talk about maybe it's that kind of day where you can't get them to chase a bait for nothing. Uh, so you're running these crankbaits and stuff and you just can't get a bite, can't get a bite, or they're either short striking or something like that. You know, maybe you slow down, sped up. You've tried everything that you know, but you know the fish are there. They just won't, um, you know, commit to that bite. This is a good technique for any suspended fish, whether it's winter. Most people know it for wintertime bait. If y'all watch my content for a while, y'all know that I use this year round. There's no reason to not use it year round. It's such a versatile bait and not a whole lot of people like to use it. So, um, or know how to use it or just, I don't know. Just ain't a whole lot of people that use it. So there's uh, two brands that I prefer to throw. Uh, one's a Mega Bass and one's a Strike King. So we're gonna go over the Mega Bass first. I gotta turn around my legs, fall asleep. All right, so Let's talk about the mega bass first. Now, when the water temperature, <laughs> when the water temperature uh, gets to, um, you know, that 65 and up, I say 65 and up, 60, 60 and above probably, you'll notice when the pre-spawn starts kicking in because you'll start catching a lot more fish back to back to back to back because they're speeding up for the spawn. But, Whenever the pre-spawn starts kicking in in your area, the Mega Bass Trick Darter. This right here has a very, very erratic action. That action that the flukes give you, the zoom flukes, that real wide and crazy, you know, uh, minnow type dying movement or getting away movement, the Trick Darter does that. Uh, so if you're attempting to use the flukes and stuff like that, but you're not getting bit on them, maybe they want to hard bait more of a... Uh, more of a less, you know, crawl or whatever the flute does. I don't really know how to explain it, but you know what I'm talking about. The hard bait's got more of a hard uh, dive to it, basically. So the Mega Bass Trick Darter, Mega Bass is a little expensive. That's one thing that I do not like about the baits because if you lose one, it hurts. Or if you like me, I'll show you here in just a second what happened. But uh, either way, so let's talk about the other Mega Bass. This is the one that I typically use from fall all the way to the end of winter, basically. Mega Bass Odd and Notten. Y'all heard me talk about this bait before. This is not the right version, okay? This is the bigger size that I would use on like Tennessee River and stuff like that. I will link this one down in the description. For some reason, Tackle Warehouse does not have it. Why Tackle Warehouse does not have it, I have no idea. It's the craziest thing I've ever saw. But you have to go to Bass Pro Shop to buy this. Uh, you can order it online or whatever, but you can't order the smaller version. You can order the giant version, but you can't order the smaller version. But this is Odd Notton Jr. Uh, as you see, the rear end is missing off of it. Um, that day up at uh, Bear, I was talking about where I caught 60, 70 fish that one day. Yeah, they took the whole end of my jerk bait there. Um, this bait right here has a very, very special action. I don't know how to necessarily explain it, but uh, once this thing's sitting in the water, it's got a uh, wobble to it. It, it kind of wobbles, but it suspends. And um, the fish love it. I mean, they love it. Fall the winter, though, that bait right there, you can use it slow, you can use it fast, but it really, really shines in those little bit slower patterns. So fast, it still works great, but it shines more on the little bit of a, the pop, pop, pause. Pop, 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 pop. Those type of actions. Now, Another one I, I like to talk about is the Strike King. So the Strike King jerk baits, I've I've used them for years. Um, I used these before I ever thought about using Mega Bass. But either way, I've caught more fish off these than I have anything else. And uh, these right here 
Typically, if I cannot get a good reaction bite off of the Mega Bass, then I'll move to the Strike King. And I do that because it has a less subtle action, so it's not, uh, or a more subtle action. It's not, um, it doesn't have all the quick turns and the dives and the weird, you know, rolls and stuff like that. It's more of a straight on jerk bait. It just, pssst, and start floating slowly. And then it'll float. You know, it's, it's got a more subtle action. That's just like a lot of times you'll be running a Texas rig, you tail, a ribbon tail worm, and you're just not getting bites and you swap over to a dinger, it's a worm, but there's no action to it, or it's less of an action. The fish just want that less of an action. So if you're running these type of jerk baits, like the Mega Bass and stuff that's got a lot of action to them and you're not getting bites, swap over to something like the Strike King. Um, that'll give you, uh, you know, a little less action. You can see if they, they just want the little less action baits. Um, so speaking of all that, I want to kind of show you all this. It just because if you're if you're not knowledgeable of this or you're unsure whether or not you you want one because you don't know if it works, I can tell you it does. Uh, this is the Strike Zone Pocket Knocker. This is a lure knocker. If you have never had pocket knockers, you need to get some because like this bait right here, the Mega Bass, this Mega Bass, this Mega Bass, the Spro Rock Crawler, all that stuff. That's like sixty bucks sitting right there. If it gets hung up in the water, I'm not happy about it. These right here, what you do is when you get hung up, your line's tight, you take your pocket knocker out of your pocket or wherever you keep it, you snap it on your line, keep your line a little tight, let that thing slide all the way down. As soon as it starts getting close, just shake it a little bit and it'll knock it loose. I saved so much money. If I'd have had one in my boat, I would have got my rock crawler back that uh, I broke off. So uh, either way, that's what I get for being cheap and not buying none. So don't be cheap. I'm going to buy you something. I'm not sponsored by them. I'm just telling you, save your butt some money. All right, so let's go over the jigs. So, um, like I've told you a hundred times, there's only a couple jig colors I like to throw, black and brown. Keep it simple. Just keep it simple, black and brown. So, G-Money jigs uh, is the jigs I prefer to use. Use whatever you want, but these right here, they got a 90 degree line tie. See it right there? Makes it a lot easier going through woods, rock, anything like that. But, rubber skirt, it's just got a completely different axe to it. One more money off these jigs and just about anything else. So the black and blues, I typically like to run the Berkeley Pyre Bait black and blue. Now, if you look, these are three inch. They're about, shoot, they're about twice as long as the actual bait. So typically what I do is on these baits, I will go down to like the middle rib and I will just uh, cut, just straight across, just cut it and I'll slide it up on my hook and that will be my trailer on these jigs. This time of year, I'm not hopping like I do during the summer. So during the summer, you know, you're typically hopping the jig. This time of year, I'm not, I'm slowly dragging, I'm slowly dragging, pick up. I don't slack line with the jig. Some people do. I don't I've had more break offs than anything doing that. So I don't slack line, but either way, keep your line tight, pull it. That's typically what I do. Now the brown, uh, I'm not sure what this is called, G Money jig. But it's just a brown jig with a little bit of orange in it, mimic crawfish. And I did the same thing with the green pumpkin, Berkeley Pyre. Uh, bait. If they don't have the green pumpkin, um, then uh, typically like a red bug or something like that's good. Just something something close, you know. Um, but those are the baits that I wanted to cover uh, that you may not have tried this year. Or just you're not sure exactly how to run these baits. The crankbaits basically get these things down. As fast as you can, once it hits bottom, keep contact with the bottom and move as slow as you can. The jerk baits, those are different. Um, you know, they may be hitting on a one, two, three, pop, pause, or one, two, three, pop, pause, one, two, three, pop, pause, one, two, pause, and then a hit. Okay, so uh, jerk baits, you kind of have to experiment with them more. It's different in every situation, but the jig's super simple. Throw it out there, let it hit bottom, and then you're going to slowly pull it. Now, if the fish are suspended, you can get a good... Uh, you can get a good cadence. So let's say you throw your jig up there close to the bank and the bank kind of tapers down just a little bit and then it drops off, right? And the fish are sitting right on the drop off. Let's say they're just wanting a jig, but they're not willing to go up there and chase it, but you're getting bit every time you come off that ledge. When you start to come off that edge, just take a slow reel. Slow reel, keep your rod tip up, keep that slow reel. Once they grab it, reel down, then you got the hook set, okay? So out of the case, those are the baits that I prefer, uh, or I say prefer, those are the baits that uh, I would suggest 
to give a shot on your home lakes. These will work. Blueback Heron lakes, it doesn't matter. Blueback Heron, your regular lakes, rivers, it doesn't matter. Uh, typically, with rivers, you know, you're going to be using your little bit bigger baits. So uh, just be aware of that. But either way, guys, if it helps you out, make sure to like, subscribe, comment down below. Let me know what you think. I'll see you next time.